a very good afternoon i hope you're all doing good today thank you so much for taking the time to attend today's webinar i am sharada a product expert in ad self service plus from the marketing team of manager engine and i will be your presenter for today before we get into today's session i would like to quickly check if my voice is audible and the display is well and clear if my voice is audible and the display is good please drop in a yes message in the chat box or question star provided All right, thank you so much. Um so yes, today we're going to be talking about the power of password self service. I'm going to be walking through how AD self service plus an integrated password self service and single sign on solution uh is going to help users in your organization with what they are missing out on. And before we jump into the session I would like to start by talking about why we need to manage passwords. So if you're somebody who is familiar with AD self service plus you've worked your way um around AD self service plus I'm sure you're aware of what the tool does. But for those of you who are new to AD self service plus itself the reason why we need to manage passwords is because 40% of the help desk calls that you receive in your organization on an everyday basis is because of password management troubles so by a help desk call i mean simple so simple calls that require a user to reset their password or um a user whose passwords have expired and they need to reset their password they've forgotten their password or their account has been locked down and simple password management troubles like this lead to 40% of the help desk calls with expiry expired password being or topping the list and another important reason why we need to manage password is because of the increase in security threats i'm sure you're aware of all the complaints mandates that's been coming up um today but at the same time we also we also talk about the increase in attacks how major organizations are being attacked that um the security is being compromised network ha attacks happen every single day and this is a rule that is applicable to security breaches as well this is the 8020 rule so what the 8020 rule basically states is that 80% of the security attacks that we face in today's world is because of the 20% of the factors the commonly known factors that is what the 8020 rule says which means that the reason for 80% of the security attacks that we are facing in today's world is because of the most commonly most common mistakes security mistakes that we do as organizations as people and believe it believe me when i say this the one that is stopping the list the 20% of most common reasons for security attacks and the one that is stopping the list is password attacks password based attacks because it is extremely easy to break into a network by hacking a password it's extremely easy to misuse a user's identity to crack into a network and that is one of the top reason for security breaches that have happened across the world so these are facts and this is why it is important to not only manage passwords but also to boost security that is available in your organization and when we talk about active directory the problem here is that it does not provide support for password self service when i talk about security with respect to active directory the password policy that is available the native password policy that is available in active directory is more than 18 years old we're talking about technology that is more than 18 years old whereas the security threats attacking techniques are improving every single day and this is why it is important to not only empower users to take care of their own password self service not only to financially uh 
aid us not only to improve the condition of help desk calls in our organization, but also to work on the security aspect of it to protect our network as well. Also, talking about cloud technology, we are aware that cloud technology has taken a giant leap. I'm sure you use um, a lot of social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and all that. And I'm sure you do not call a help desk and say, hey, I do not remember my Instagram password. Can you please help me set it up? Or I, do not, I, do, I don't think you call your help desk and say, hey, I cannot access my Gmail account or my Office 365 account. So when applications that's on the cloud, that's hosted on the cloud, and most of the on-premises application as well support self-service, why not take your Active Directory self-service as well? Why not take up Active Directory self-service, Windows self-service as well? So that is the idea behind uh, AD self-service plus, and I'm going to talk about how AD Self Service Plus as a solution is going to help you set this up in your organization. Basically, facilitate password self-service not only for your Active Directory, but other cloud applications as well. Allow users to take care of their own forgotten password reset process or unlock uh, unlocking their account, AD account by themselves. Securing the password reset process with multi-factor authentication. And also, you as an administrator, can keep track of all that is happening in your environment. You can audit user self-service actions. You can configure alert notifications. All this happening under one single console. So yes, with that said, I'm going to quickly jump into the AD Self-Service Plus console and walk you through how to work with AD Self-Service Plus. If you have any questions regarding today's session, please keep them coming in the questions tab. I will try and answer them during the session itself. Also, the last 10 minutes of today's session is a dedicated question answer session. So you can save your questions for the end as well. And yes, the video recording of this webinar will be available online. But if you would like to leave the session because of your busy schedule, please drop in your mail ID so I can forward the copy of this session to you personally. So yes, with that said, I'm going to quickly jump into the AD Self Service Plus portal. If you're somebody who has already worked with AD Self Service Plus, I'm sure you're aware of how this works. Uh, but if this is your first time working with AD Self Service Plus, what I'm going to do is quickly drop in a workshop setup for you to work with in the chat box right there. So you can make use of the AD Self Service Plus workshop setup that I've just sent across to you. And yes, you can walk through working with AD Self Service Plus as I go about showing you how this works. So let's start with deploying AD Self Service Plus. Pretty simple. Hit the AD Self Service Plus web page, click on download, and you can set it up within a matter of five minutes. And once you log in as an administrator, this is the view that you get. So when you log in for the very first time, you're expected to configure your domain. Your domain setting is available right here. So all that you're required to input is your domain name, enter the domain controller, given your username, authenticate your identity, and you're good to go. So this domain configuration is already done. I've set it up as my default domain. You can go about and edit your domain details to the existing domain. You can also add multiple domains, ADLs, AD Self Service Plus has a multi-domain support. This helps you to update your domain objects. So any change that's made in the Active Directory can manually, manually be updated right here. And delete if you do not wish to work with this particular domain anymore. So as you set AD Self Service Plus for the very first time, what happens from the end user's perspective is what I'm going to show you. When a domain user logs in for the very first time, I'm going to log in as myself. Logging in with my Windows Active Directory password credentials, that is. And as I log in for the very first time, I have a message which welcomes me to the self-service portal, but also requires me to enroll with AD Self Service Plus to enjoy the benefits of password self-service. 
All right. So what happens here is that I have to enroll with the security question answers, which is nothing but a factor for authentication. I'm choosing my security question right there. So once this is done, I'm going to hit enroll and I'm good to go. So this is the very first step that the user will do as soon as they log in. The reason behind this is nothing but to add an additional layer of security. AD Self Service Plus by default has the security question answer method of authentication enabled. So it is mandatory for a user to enroll with security question answer when they log in for the very first time. And this will ensure that they can go through a seamless password reset process or an account unlock process when need be. All right, so starting from the very first tab available right here, a self update tab, you can empower users to take care of their own self service actions. What I'm going to do now is randomly input a telephone number, hit update, and show you that the properties have been successfully updated. But any change that happens in the AD Self Service Plus portal is reflected real time. And that is what I'm going to show you. So under Active Directory Users and Computers, I'm going to open Sharda's properties. And you can see that it's updated right here. So any change that happens in AD Self Service Plus is reflected in your Active Directory real time. And the advantage that the self-update layout provides is that you can ensure that users input their personal information right here from the AD Self Service Plus homepage, either the web application or the mobile app. And also this particular page can be customized by you, the administrator. All right, so moving on to another operation, another self-service operation. I'm going to walk you through how a user can go through a change password operation. So right there, Active Directory is available. I am entering my old password, inputting my new password, and it has to abide to the domain password policy requirement. Go about and do the same once again. And when I hit change password, my password has been successfully changed. This simply means that the user can log into the AD Self Service Plus portal and go about with a password change, not only for their Active Directory, but other on-premises and cloud applications as well. So if you had noticed right here, the Office 365 application is configured as well. I had pre-configured Office 365 before today's setup. And yes, I've given the name Office 365 Sync to show that it's a password synchronization feature. And this is how simple it is for a user to go about self-updating personal information or changing a user's password or enrolling with AD Self Service Plus the very first time they log in. Also, the user has the ability to go through subscribing from and to mail groups. Once again, you as an administrator control those privileges. You can also have an additional layer of approval by setting up approval workflow, the advantage of approval workflow is that you can verify users self service actions before it goes through. So I've jumped back to the admin portal. So under the configuration tab, I'm going to show you the policies available right here. By default, the entire domain has been chosen as a policy a self service policy. I'm going to tweak this and given the name admin. Select OUs and groups present in my Active Directory, fine tune this and give access only to the users belonging to the OU admin and hit save. So I've created one self-service policy with all the permissions. The advantage of creating multiple self-service policies is that you can customize self-service actions, permissions and privileges to users based on these self-service policies that you create right here. I'm going to go about and create another one. Finance. Select OUs and groups present in the Active Directory. I've created a test organizational unit, Sharada. 
I'm going to give access to users belonging to finance, saving this policy as well. And the next is going to be HR. So for users belonging to HR, I'm not going to give the permission for self-update and proceeding with the policy HR. I've created three self-service policies using my AD Self-Service Plus portal. And yes, I'm also going to show you what I've done in the background. So in my Active Directory users and computers, I've created a test module under the name Sharada, which is my name. And yes, I've tried to replicate an organizational structure. So admin, finance, and HR, I've tried to mimic an organizational structure by creating users under each of these groups. And that is very similar to the policy, self-service policy that I've created right here on your screen. So I'm going to walk you through the different password permissions and how we can work our way around it right now. So like I said, I've already showed you how to do self-update. I also showed you how simple it is to go about with a change password operation. So the procedure works similarly for both your Active Directory as well as multiple um, on-premises and cloud applications for which you have enabled password synchronization right there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is allow users to go through a password reset process for which I'm required to venture around multi-factor authentication. Like I said, the benefit of creating a policy is the advantage of customizing it. So when I have admin, I can set the privileges to just security question answer. But when I'm working my way about with other policies, I can increase the factor, the authentication techniques for finance. I can keep it to Google Authenticator under multi-factor authentication. So yes, I can work my way around different authenticators listed on your screen, starting from the basic security question answer all the way to the AD Self Service Plus mobile authenticator or making use of an SAML authentication with the help of Okta, One Login, or a custom SAML provider. So this is the benefit of having multiple password policies. But the thing that you need to note here is it is very important to have the precedence set. You need to prioritize the policies based on the precedence because if one user belongs to multiple policies, you're going to have to closely monitor that because the policy with the highest precedence or priority will take, uh, will, will be acted on. So it is very important to have the order in place. Since I do not have any users belonging to multiple policies, I'm okay with the precedence available right here. But that is something you need to note. So if you're wondering why something goes wrong, for instance, why you have enabled Google Authenticator for a particular person, let's say John, while uh, the security question answer is what works for him, then you need to take a quick check on the precedence and see if John belongs to any other policy listed right here. So that is something that you need to keep a note of. So what I've done is set up Google Authenticator for the policy finance right there. And for HR, I'm going with verification code and saving the settings. All right, so once this is done, what I'm going to do is Try and see if I can log in as one of the users belonging to finance. Let me do that again. All right. So what has happened here is that I cannot log in because my account has been locked. So it says, please contact your administrator. 
But what a user would naturally do is try and unlock their account. So let's try and mimic Brian's actions to see where we headed to. There, I have a message which says, you are required to enroll with security question answers. Please log in if you remember your password and enroll or contact your administrator in case you don't. This is going to put us into trouble because we just got locked out. We do not remember my password. Brian does not remember his password. He just got locked out and he is not enrolled with AD Self Service Plus. So this is a problem. Brian will not be able to unlock his account and will have to contact his administrator. So what I'm going to do here is quickly check which policy Brian belongs to. It says finance. So as an administrator, I'm going to the policy finance, giving permission for verification code method of authentication, saving the settings, and I'm going to repeat my action right here. Watch closely because I'm going to do what I did previously. Clicking on account, unlock your account option, entering Brian's name, giving in the capture. And this time, I do not have an error message which says that I'm not enrolled. Whereas, I can go about unlocking my account. And this is simply because the verification code method of authentication is the only method that allows users to go through an enrollment free password reset or account unlock process. And that being said, it is also my favorite method of authentication because this, your email address or a mobile number is something that is very, very personal. So not only am I adding an additional layer of security, I am Securing it to such an extent that one single factor of authentication, that is just the verification code, will do the job for us. So I'm going to quickly log in to my workshop account that, I, that I've created. So just for the ease of working with multiple accounts, what I've done is created one single mail ID for all the users listed under this particular test OU. So I can show you how this works. So there I have a message which says, Dear Brian, we understand that you want to reset your password or unlock your account. I also have the verification code available right, right there. I'm going to enter the verification code. Enter the CAPTCHA before I run out of time. I have a time ticking. Click on continue. And all I have to do is enter the CAPTCHA once again to successfully unlock my account. A simple three-step process, enter your domain name, which is something the user is aware of, enter the verification code by choosing your comfortable mail ID, something that the user has, and with just two factors, the user has a successful account unlock action or a password reset operation. A password reset operation typically works the same way. And I'm going to walk you through that as well. So I hope I'm pretty clear until this segment of today's session. If you have any questions, please keep them coming. If you have any trouble following up, you can drop in so I can do a quick recap of the action that I just did. All right, a quick walk through what we saw until now. Deploying AD Self Service Plus, I'm sure you're aware of how to do this. A simple download from the web page. And yes, this works not only for your on-premises Active Directory, but other cloud applications as well. I'm going to quickly show you how to work with a password reset for Office 365 coming very, very soon. We saw how you can allow users to unlock their AD accounts by themselves. In this case, we saw how Brian was able to go through a successful unlock account process. Typically, what would have happened is it would have ended up as a help disk call, but we're saving a lot of time and effort put into that. I'm going to walk you through a password reset right now. We also saw how Sharda can self-update personal information to her active directory. We saw a quick real-time self-update of telephone number. 
and also how simple it is to have a change password operation. All right, back to the AD Self Service Plus portal. What I'm going to do now is go through a password reset process. But before that, when I said, when I spoke about security, I spoke about how the native Windows domain password is more than 18 years old. So let me beef up the security right here with the help of the AD Self Service Plus password policy enforcer. I'm going to keep it very, very simple for you to follow right now. Disallow use of five characters, minimum password length at eight special characters. I'm going to stick to one. And one numeric disallow palindromes. I'm going to enforce this password policy in the GINA CP as well as ADUC screen. Show this password policy in the reset password and change password pages. This is applied for the policy HR. Save. I am good to go. A simple custom password policy for all users belonging to HR. So now let's see this work real time. I'm going to pretend to be a user who goes through a reset password operation because he has forgotten his password. And that user today is Adam. Adam is going through a password reset process. Clicking on continue, the verification code method is enabled for Adam as well. I'm going to quickly clear this to show you how this is going to work. All right, entering the captcha. A verification code has been sent to my inbox right there. Dear Adam, we understand that you've forgotten your password. Yes, I have. Going about to changing Adam's password. The captcha is my enemy. I go wrong with this every single time. All right. There you go. This time I have the custom granular password policy enforced right here. I'm going to reset the password of my Office 365 account as well. If you're wondering how I did the password synchronization, don't miss to join me for my password synchronization session. I'm entering my new password and as I go through the process, I have a check against all the complexity rules that I've abided to and a green good to go password strength analyzer. My password is strong. I'm going to reset my password. Like I said, the captcha is always my enemy. I'm repeating the same thing once again. NFPGC2. Reset password for Adam. Yes, thank you. I have a successful password reset, not only for my Active Directory, but as well as my Office 365 account. One password synchronized across multiple accounts is what AD Self Service Plus can provide you, and we call it password synchronization. So this can be applicable not only for your Office 365 account, but across multiple on-premises and cloud applications. Let me try and log in to my Office 365 account as Adam right now. I'm going to see if this password has been reflected already. Entering the password that I just reset. So yes, I was able to successfully log in and access Adam's account. Thank you for AD Self Service Plus and an easy password reset process. So when we're talking about one or two applications, this seems very simple. Having one password across multiple applications is where the catch is. So I'm going to quickly jump to the AD Self Service Plus portal and walk you through Password synchronization as well. So you can see that my Office 365 
account password synchronization is enabled clicking on edit all i had to do is choose the module password synchronizer given my domain name display name enter my admin credentials password select all policies in it update that's how simple it is to set up or configure office 365 or azure password synchronization so we are talking about one password across multiple on-premises and cloud applications multiple active directory domains service now zoho salesforce office 365 ibm hp ux g suite oracle all this one single password making it extremely simple for users to manage their passwords so this is when your valid question arises i can already hear your thoughts when i'm talking about one single password i'm also talking about one password being compromised and multiple accounts being compromised one password and multiple accounts being compromised this is exactly why i spoke about the password policy and foursome in spite of adding multiple layers of security you cannot secure the strength of your password if you do not have a strong password and that can be done by enforcing a granular password policy right from the ad self service plus portal the granular password policy disallows uh, disallows pa password history it does not allow you to use dictionary words it disallows patterns like qrt password asdf 12345 you can also increase or override all the complexity rules by choosing a passphrase rule the history rule is available disallowing characters more than twice consecutively disallowing uh, characters from the username using both upper and lower cases basically increasing your password length increasing your password complexity and increasing the time taken to hack into your password time taken for a hacker to break into your password this definitely means boosting the security no password is unhackable if that's even a word but what i'm trying to say here is that i'm trying to increase the time taken to break into my account cracking my password with the help of granular password policy which is applied across multiple on-premises and cloud applications a granular password policy overriding my windows native password policy, overriding my Office 365 password, my G Suite password, my ServiceNow password, Zendesk password, and that is what AD Self Service Plus can provide. So when I'm talking about password management, simplifying password management, I also know for a fact that I'm not talking about compromising on the security aspect of it. And you as an administrator can take control of what is happening in your environment right from this particular tab configuration tab you can customize policies you can customize um, self-service actions you can give users privilege privileges restrict user self-service actions set up expiry notification um, give them the option of taking care of their own password self-service but at the same time monitoring their actions adding an additional layer of approval with the help of approval workflow all this and much more right from one single portal and that is what i'm trying to talk about today and that is what i mean when i say the power of password self-service so yes with that said i've come to the last segment of today's session which is the report step so you have given users the privilege of taking care of their own self-service action but it does not end there you have to monitor what's going on in your environment and it is very very important and that can be done right from one single console which is the report stack all the reports that's available right here right from your reset password audit reports your change password audit reports your notification failures your identity verification failures enrollment reports security question answer reports and also a status of whose password is going to expire when a soon to expire password users report a password expired users report disabled users report all that and much more available right here from one single console you can monitor all that's happening in your environment right here from the users report these reports are customizable you can schedule these reports they are actionable reports and yes 
This will give you a complete insight into all that is happening in your password management environment. Also, when I talk about being aware of user self-service action, I also mean notifying users about their self-service actions. This is typically how it works with your other cloud applications as well. Every time you reset your Google password or any of your um, social media passwords, you get a ma mail or a notification, a push notification or an SMS saying, hey, you've reset your password. If this is not you, it's time you go check. A warning mail or a notification saying this process is successful. That is simply what you can do with AD Self Service Plus as well. Every time a user resets, unlocks their account, or goes through any of the self-service actions, you can notify them via mail, SMS, or push notification. All you have to do is set up your mail server, your SMS server, or ensure that the user has the AD Self-Service Plus mobile application. And you as an administrator can also be notif notified about the user's self-service actions. Also, integrate with Service Desk Plus to create a ticket every time something happens so you're aware of all that is happening in your user's environment. This is simply how you can take care of password management in your organization. At the same time, empower users to take care of their own password self-service actions. So you hand over the touch of password self-service, but at the same time, sit back, relax, and monitor all that is happening in your environment and AD Self Service Plus allows you to do that. So yes, with that said, I've come to the end of today's session. We saw how to deploy AD Self Service Plus, your password self-service and single sign-on solution. We, the focus for today's session was on password self-service. So we tried to mimic users' actions of how a self-update would happen, how a change password operation happens, how a user will be able to successfully reset their password or unlock their account with the additional layer of security, which we call multi-factor authentication. We also saw how to secure the password reset process, customize different multi-factor authenticators, work your way around verification code, Google Authenticator, RSA security, and much more, and how you as an administrator or an IT specialist can take care of all that's happening in your user's environment. Sit back, relax, hand over the torch of password self-service. At the same time, audit user self-service actions, configure alert notifications, monitor everything that's happening in your environment. All this and much more right from one single console, either your web application or your mobile app. And that is the advantage that AD Self-Service Plus provides. And that is the power of password self-service. With that said, I have come to the end of today's session. Please keep your questions coming in the chat box if you have any. If you would like to receive a copy of today's webinar, drop in your mail IDs and I will make sure a personal copy reaches you. Also, please go and see, walk your way around AD Self Service Plus if you've learned something new today. Drop in your honest feedbacks, comments, and what you look forward to in the upcoming sessions. We devise customized webinars as well so I can help you with that, drop in your honest feedback in the feedback form that will be mailed to you right after today's session. Work your way with AD Self Service Plus. And if you have any trouble configuring, we have a dedicated support team to help you. So if you'd like to reach out to them, support at adselfserviceplus.com is the link that you need, is the mail ID that you need. Also, if you have any personal questions for me, if you would like to, um, receive a copy of the presentation if you'd like to receive a copy of the webinar if you have any further questions about any of the um, current available features or if you're if you require any particular feature if you have a feature request anything and everything that concerns ad self service plus today's session or any of my sessions that you have attended before please feel free to drop in a mail to me it would be my pleasure to respond back to you with the right resources also, talking about resources, AD Self Service Plus has a, an abundance bucket of resources already available on the website. So if you have any trouble working with any of the features, go check the website, go check the blog, check the forum. We have a dedicated knowledge base article, so how to and tips and tricks article to work your way or with the nuances of AD Self Service Plus as an application. We have a fun blog where we update the new features that's, that's, that comes up. And we also have a dedicated forum for discussions where our product experts drop in their 
um, answers to the questions that you have when you work with AD Self Service Plus. Also, I would like to quickly tell you about the upcoming seminar in London. Derek Melbo, an Active Directory and IT security expert and a Microsoft MVP is going to be presenting at a Manage Engine seminar in London. And I've just dropped the link to you in your chat box. So if you are interested, you can enroll. It's a free session, it's a free seminar, and it's going to happen in London. So the details will be available. If you're interested, please check it out. You will have the privilege to have attend a session by our Microsoft MVP, Derek Melba himself. All right, thank you so much. With that said, I am going to call it a day. It was an immense pleasure to be the host for today's session. Thank you so much for taking time to attend today's webinar. Thank you so much for taking time away from your busy schedule to be part. I really, really hope it was informative and you learned a little more about what you can do with AD Self Service Plus. On that note, this is Sharda from the marketing team of Manage Engine signing off for today. Thank you so much. Have a great day ahead.